Okay, so the next chapter is the future of aviation industry, airlines and airports. Again, what do you think is the future? What, in your opinion, could be the future of the aviation industry, airlines and airports? Now, obviously, you could talk in terms of artificial intelligence, which is actually the talk of today artificial intelligence, use of robotic systems and, uh, you know, different technological upgradations which are going on where there is facial screening and, uh, you know, where there is mechanical screening processes which are there. So apart from that, okay, you know, cyber, uh, you know, cyber upgradations, software upgradations, technological upgradations, or different types of aircrafts that possibly could be, uh, you know, designed, structured, and, you know, maybe it would, like, for example, you see, I'm not talking about the aviation, of course, for a moment, just deviating for some time, for a moment. Um, have you heard of flying cars? Uh, Dubai recently um, just last week or just a week before that, I'm not quite sure, launched the first flying car, a car that flies, an automobile that flies, of course. So you see, technology is advancing and things are changing. And also, we have unmanned buses and unmanned taxis that, in a sense, that is all controlled by a software and there is no real taxi driver there no human being who is driving the taxi it's unmanned so well even uh, you know the metro system is you know again there is technological upgradation there i mean there's unmanned metros and all all these things are available well coming back to the aviation industry now, obviously there would be different types of aircrafts that may be launched different categories of aircrafts, different shapes, sizes. We really do not know what, what kind of upgradation would be there. So these are some of the things that you could really anticipate. And of course, uh, you can also anticipate um, artificial intelligence. Of course, I already mentioned that. Now, apart from that, uh, you could talk about um, investments, better investment in expansion programs expansion of the airports, airport projects, so investments. So these are some of the things that could really come to your mind. Is there anything else that is coming to your mind before we go to our slides? Well, if not really, then okay. So the recent COVID-19 pandemic has played havoc in every sector, including the aviation sector. Now you are a witness to this. The airline industry and the airport have suffered immensely for the past three years. And you guys being a part of the airport already that you're working there. So you, you have already witnessed this part of it. So the pandemic added to the regional and global recession and financial woes. The aviation industry was the worst hit of all. The preponderance of escalated expenditure for the maintenance of facilities over profits gained was a dominant feature of the industry during the pandemic. That means the there has been like over the ex escalated expenditure for the maintenance of facilities was more than the profits. So there was a preponderance of expenditure over profits. It was the expenditure was actually more than the profits that was actually gained. And that was a dominant feature. That was a feature that was a striking feature in the in aviation industry during the pandemic. Now, to counter the impact the airline sector has devised, you know, currently also there is this thing that is going on with respect to, uh, you know, luring travel trips or luring the customers by giving them travel tips or there's multiple leisure plans and tips and all in all effort of fortifying the finance structure of each individual aviation company, airlines company or airports, as well as contributively fortifying the industry as a whole. However, it can be seen that in the near future, ticket prices may be hiked. 
once the industry is proximate to stabilization, so as to recover the past, I think it's already begun in some some airlines have slowly started to, um, they have begun increasing their prices, uh, unlike what it was a month back. I know it because I am a regular traveler. So there is a slight hike in ticket prices. Well, we do not know. Let us see what happens in the future. So one, I could really foresee, one can really foresee that ticket prices can really, you know, escalate even more, probably. You know, it, there is a high possibility there that it can escalate even more once the industry comes to proximity with stabilization, once it is stabilized a little bit, so as to recover the past losses and then divert towards profit maximization as their renewed goal. Next is overhauling in technologies and implementing greener projects in every airport across the globe. It's again a dream that is on its way to be realized. I mean, every airport without the exception of even one, every airport, you know, overhauls its technology and implements greener projects into its scheme. It incorporates, you know, environmental friendly projects into the scheme like this, you know, um, having the solar lighting and so on. Then disparities in the performance of different airports and airlines are inevitable. There has to be slight differences at least. However, bridging the gap model must be introduced and is advisable to be strategized. So this is possible with unified efforts of the airlines, airports, monitoring bodies, and the government. Now, a recent survey conveys that airline leases have plummeted low since the original manufacturers or OEM, as we call it, OEM, abbreviated original equipment manufacturer, or I've just used the word or the term original manufacturers here. It could, you could also say OEM, abbreviated original equipment manufacturers. So since the original manufacturers of aircraft have continued manufacturing aircraft with little demand, and now there seems to be a surge in availability rather than sales and utility. So that means the present status is availability and supply overrides demand. So that's what it is. So at present, if you look around, the current status is availability and supply. So there is more of supply than the demand. Well, in case of airline leases. Next is there is this very prominent organization called CETA, that is Society International, the Telecommunications, and it has got their own way of pronouncing. So Aeronautics, founded in February 1949, and it's headquartered in Geneva, Switzerland, and it's a well-known aviation giant. CETA, in its 2020 report and an online publication, opined that Security at airports would be upgraded. So this is what CETA foresees for the next decade. So CETA says that airports would be upgraded with respect to security systems, that is to augment a frictionless journey with the help of upgraded technology and artificial intelligence that would scan passengers without the need of taking off their shoes or jewels or any such item that need to be checked from the passenger. Like for example, these days, I mean, today when you travel by air, you are asked to buy at the security counter, you are asked to remove sometimes some of the gold ornaments, sometimes not always, any gold ornaments or any ornaments, any metal ornaments that one is using, and your watches, keys, leather belts, shoes. I'm no, I'm sure you know that. So, so the, the the passenger is asked to you know when they go through the scanning system in in case there is a kind of a beep, they say okay, go back and you know they check you again and they say okay, what is this? You have a key with you, okay, remove the key. You have a a wallet with you, okay, remove the wallet, whatever. So you have rings, ornaments, or shoes that God forbid has some metal in that, and you have to remove the shoes as well. So, and again, put it in that tray. So CETA actually is forcing that in the years to come, probably a decade ahead, probably within the decade as well. There is a possible of frictionless journey and the security systems in the airports would be upgraded. So there are different, uh, you know, just for your knowledge, prominent aviation giants like Thales, 
Thales is an Italian group. Well, in our slides, we're talking about Sita, but there is another one called Thales, Thales, T-H-A-L-E-S, that's Italian group. So when they are an uh, aviation giant, then we also have Frequentis. Frequentis is, I think, Austrian. Well, there are several, but the CETA has prepared a report coming back to CETA, coming back to our slides. CETA, in its 2020 report, is actually forcing frictionless joining with respect to upgradation of security systems in the airports. Next is CETA further opines that the future of airports seem promising with you know, defined software networks that would provide better airline connectivity and the airports on the other hand will be high tech and highly automated. CETA also opines that artificial intelligence would take over the sector and the introduction of highly intelligent system would birth the golden silicon era as CETA calls it. So probably this CETA says there's going to be a golden silicon era in the years to come. So the world, therefore, can be optimistic and anticipate the launch of newer shapes of aircraft in the future with better capacity and integrated techniques, meeting customer needs through enhanced in-flight services and overall increased flexibility, cybersecurity, growth in budgeted airlines to encourage air travel, upgraded uh, predictive technology and allied some of the things that can be expected. If you see today, if you look at the aircrafts today, the current aircrafts, they are much more comfortable than the earlier aircrafts. You could just Google it out and find out how the earlier aircrafts really looked. Uh, I mean, I'm talking about inside the aircrafts, the passenger perspective with respect to seats and so on, seats, in-flight entertainment and so on. Now, in-flight entertainment, when you talk about in-flight in -flight entertainment, once upon a time, they used to be a common monitor as far as my memory goes, at least, but probably before that, you can just you know Google it out. Probably there was no in-flight entertainment. Though, at least from the times that I have been traveling, we used to have this common monitor system. After that, we started having individual in-flight monitors where you could enjoy entertainment. It could it, it was actually attached to the back of a seat, and the person who was sitting there could you know has a seat, uh, the seat in front of him and behind the seat, there is this monitor and you could really view the monitor there. You can capture the, you know, how the F air, the air um, craft is moving and plus you could watch movies, enjoy music, news, whatever. And then now there is a time where now we have this uh, kind of in-flight Wi-Fi system where you could just, you know, connect your mobile to the in-flight Wi-Fi. I'm talking about in-flight Wi-Fi. And you get connected to the app of a particular airline, for example, Etihad Airways, which is the official carrier of Abu Dhabi, UAE, United Arab Emirates. So they have this app and you get connected to that particular app and you have a number of, uh, you know, entertainment features there like you could watch news you could watch any regional um uh, european movie or you could watch any american movie or any english movie whatever british comedy or even you know indian movie bollywood hollywood name it and it is there and the sports news bbc cnn i mean you you're just connected so you see there has been upgradation of technology and how it has progressed. So likewise, innovations will go on and on and things will keep changing for better. Now, if you see, as of today, there is still more better, you know, in-flight services that have been introduced and, you know, type of uh, seats that are available, more leg room, more leg space, comfortable seats, cushion seats, and so on. So. Of course, obviously, upgraded technologies and upgraded in-flight services, enhanced in-flight services systems can always be expected. So that is the future. And the allied, uh, apart from that, is predictive technology. Like, okay, in so and so time, the flight is going to land. It's already there, but much more uh, enhanced systems like upgraded predictive technology 
also like for example there's another something called as at present fod that is foreign object detector See, in case on the runway, there is a, a foreign object. It could be a bird, it could be a stone, it could be some object. So, you know, there is a software that would detect a foreign object, which is not clearly visible by the pilot. And the pilot would be intimated by the operations team, the concerned person, the flight, uh, you know, team there. And uh, they would intimate the person and then the, 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 the pilot and the pilot would, you know, not take off until he gets for their signal again. So that's just an example for you. So of course, there will technological upgradation would continue. Innovations will continue. Now with all, the future of airports would be much reflected in the expansive use or extensive use of artificial intelligence. And the decade ahead would be brighter. That's what we anticipate with enhanced and swift connectivity Swift connectivity, swift networking on one hand, and upgraded facilities at airports and within aircraft on the other. So this is all with your syllabus. There are eight chapters in all. Now, chapter one, we spoke about the history and the structure of airline industry. Now, the videos are uploaded in your Google class and even the notes and even this PPT presentation, just to help you out. You can go through the video recording whenever you feel like you want to, just to revise, or in case you need explanation for something, you're free to go through the video. And also, um, you know, some notes are given to you. Next, again, chapter two. For all the chapters, it is given, of course. Then chapter two, airline company structure and airport airline nexus. Next is airports operation, chapter three. Chapter four, we've already done airlines scheduling. Chapter five, airlines operation control. Chapter six, operational deviations. Chapter seven that we have done today, challenges in airport operations. I've also given you, uh, though we were talking about airports operations, I've given you, uh, I mean, by way of explanation only and not in your notes nor in the slides, we have discussed in today's class, not just challenges in airport operations, we've also discussed uh, you know, challenges in airlines and challenges in the aviation sector as a whole. Then chapter eight, the future of aviation industry, airlines and airports. So with this, we complete your syllabus. As I said earlier, I'm reiterating, Chapter seven and chapter eight is important. Since these are two small chapters, but you can elaborate it by additional points, of course, and you can check for the most recent research and so on, and just incorporate that in your answers. And um, you can always expect chapters, if it is chapter seven, and chapter eight, if it comes for your exam. And I, I actually um, would mark this as an important topic for you for your examination point of view and uh, you can expect this to come you know as a clubbed question apart from that of course every other chapter is important and uh, yeah so well so that's all from my side let me know if you have any question question paper pattern is already uploaded in your google classroom all the chapters are completed Syllabus is done, notes are provided, PPT uploaded, videos uploaded. Do you have any question? Do you have any question for any of the chapters that you want me to explain? Something that you didn't understand? Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, we appreciate the uh, solid, concrete presentation for the syllabus. Uh, once again, we are appreciating. Thank you. Uh, okay. uh, we would like to to understand more for airline scheduling. So, if you can, please, uh, of in general, not by details, in over uh, no, overview no. for airline scheduling for that sure. chapter. Airline scheduling and yeah. flight scheduling. Sure. Yeah. We'll do that. Yeah. Yes, airline schedule. So, yes. so in overview, 
Okay, thank you. You're welcome. That's the message. Okay. Yeah. So you wanted to learn about airline scheduling, and this is just the, you know, um, just the introduction part of it. So of course, airline scheduling, that means we are talking about the flight schedules that is devised earlier and who devises it. And it is actually planned earlier, flight schedules. It's actually easy for you to understand. Flight scheduling is always planned in advance. It is devised either on the existing schedule or sometimes there is an entirely new schedule that is devised in case of any changes. And the final schedule in terms of airlines timetable, okay, for its flight operations with respect to city connectivity, flight numbers, departure and arrival times, and the type of aircraft that will be used are all part of flight scheduling. I'm repeating. Now for airline scheduling, we are concerned about flight schedules. Why flight schedules are important to know what time is a flight, when it flies, what's the, what is from which place to which place. So the airlines would have different networking systems. Of course, they would connect, for example, um, example, Abu Dhabi, Hong Kong, Abu Dhabi, Somalia, Abu Dhabi, South Africa, Johannesburg, say, for example, or Abu Dhabi, Mumbai International Airport. Now, so there are different networks, Abu Dhabi, Armenia. So, I mean, there are different uh, networking system and different airlines will have different network. So what's the duty of these airlines to prepare a schedule? What is there in that schedule? The, the network, the flight, the, the, the connectivity which is there. So, okay, flight number so and so. This is the aircraft which would be used for this particular network to fly from this aerodrome, say X to Y, and then the flight number, the departure and arrival time and so on. So this is generally about flight scheduling. Now all of these have to comply with the prevalent law, whether it is federal regulations, as well as the IATA, that is International Airport Transport Association rules. Now, of course, airline system and flight schedules are a complex task in any industry because it includes a number of factors, number of variables and constraints that are there, but effective flight scheduling, it certainly impacts smooth flight operations. So therefore, Airlines scheduling has to have proper flight scheduling to ensure smooth flight operations. Now, smooth flight operations are certainly an outcome of proper organization, proper planning, and proper control. And all these factors taken together would lead to an optimum generation of revenue, obviously, it will lead to a generation of revenue and ultimately profits. On the other hand, the more the connectivity and the links for a particular airline, the higher will be the probability of a revenue generation. Next, apart from that, again, what is the other factor that will be taken into consideration? See, think of yourself in that situation and say that, think that you are scheduling the flights. So what are the things that you will take into consideration? What would be, what if there are delays? Now, after you schedule a flight, what if there are delays? So to avoid delays, what would you do? You would see that everything is in order. The aircraft has to be in proper order. So for that, you have aircraft technicians, aircraft maintenance teams. So aircraft maintenance also depends upon airline scheduling. So for the purpose of airline scheduling, they would see that there are proper aircrafts that are maintained and they're ready to be used so that there would be no delays. And, you know, the flight schedule was, would go as planned. It would really hit off as planned. So yet, yet another aspect of the systems of scheduling is station scheduling. 
now which is predominantly which deals with resources at each station or each error room so they, they would consider even those factors like it includes baggage handling mechanics internal vehicles internal buses gates refueling equipment so all these things have to work in synchronization with each other proper coordination between all the departments you know you have all the links you confirm with everyone okay maintenance team availability of you know these systems are properly working availability of proper ground staff gate scheduling this also again another critical factor so it relies on also on the other factors such as availability vacancy security and so on Again, station scheduling also is taken into consideration for flight scheduling. And station schedules are devised and updated by operations manager of an airline station. So airlines scheduling involves flight scheduling and station scheduling. And station scheduling and flight scheduling are also interdependent because aircrafts are stationed at aerodromes. Aircrafts are stationed at the gates. So all the factors work together in coordination with one another. Now, what are the phases? The phases. So, so the, the prominent department here is, of course, the operations department. And apart from that, we have the scheduling department. Of course, you have the marketing department and so on. What is the role of the marketing department is to study the passenger demands, priorities, and so on. So the key department, if you want to call it as three keys, of course, the marketing department, scheduling department, operations department. And of all operations department, if you're talking about operations department, you have the airline operations control center, AOCC, the maintenance operation control center, and the allied, the other station operation control centers. And in coordination, of all these, the operation department work effectively in devising schedules. So the phases involved in airline scheduling are four main phases, service planning, devising schedules, allocation of resources, and plan execution. Now, the first step is, of course, you plan the services. Now, at this phase, the process of schedule generation begins primarily with a schedule plan, and a complete scheduled service plan is devised for one entire cycle. So one cycle, um, as per domestic airline, would be one day. Is one a daily schedule is considered as one cycle, and in the international airlines perspective, they normally plan it on the basis of a week. They plan it on a weekly basis. So one week is considered as one cycle in the international airlines perspective. So. At this phase of the service planning phase, the process of scheduling begins and primarily with a schedule plan. And this schedule plan is, is always so one cycle, one entire cycle. Now, if again, one day in case of domestic and a week in case of international airlines and clearly enumerating the set of services that the airlines will be offering in each market niche because different uh, different uh, you know jurisdictions or different uh, rather i shouldn't use the word jurisdiction it's not a question of legal here but different areas or different places have their own norms like for example talk about in flight services a simple example i'll give you they would plan the in flight uh, food that is available depending upon the region naturally so if it's flying to, you know, say Middle East, an airline is flying to Middle East, for example, from any point, you can just imagine any point, point A to any place in the Middle East, point B. So of course, the food would be as per, you know, the Middle Eastern standard, the Middle Eastern food. Now, what if it's flying to India? So of course, it would be something Indian food, something that they would Indians would prefer. So likewise, some other country, whichever country you can take it. So based on the country, based on the passengers that are flying, so they would study the market and accordingly, you know, uh, arrange for the set of services that would be required by the airlines for, you know, as a whole, as well as in, including even the in-flight services. So service is planned as a whole, like who would be the staff members and so on. 
who would be flying, who are the staff members, who are going to be the in-flight team, and so on. And again, as a reiteration here in this slide, the type of services and the extent will vary from one place to another and will vary from airline to airline. And while planning the available resources and the future required resources would be taken into consideration. Next is devising schedule. Who devises the schedule is there is a scheduling group. The scheduling group prepares the final schedules upon receipt of a service plan. The first receive a service plan and the next stage is of devising schedules. So a list of generic resources that is what is already available and any they would foresee either they would foresee operating constraints or they would always have a backup plan for any contingencies. So then the optimal schedule is devised that will be exhibited to the passengers of the airline after addressing the constraints and ironing them out. Then the passenger schedule will include the exact departure and arrival times and the other Ex, uh, external factors, additional factors allied. Then the flight schedules may be subject to inter interruptions. There is a possibility there that may be posed due to aircraft mechanical issues or even the most common disruption caused due to weather, foreign object hindrance, FOD, etc. Thus, a good flight schedule should incorporate a buffering mechanism in terms of sufficient resources. It should have a contingency plan and it should cover up slack or delays Suppose there are delays, like there has to be a backup plan. And also it should provide competitive on-time service. It should try its best to provide competitive on-time service. And they are most of the airlines are able to do that. Sometimes if there is a delay, they try to increase the speed of the aircraft. And how do they increase the speed? The more higher you fly, the speed increases. But of course you need to, you know, the pilot has to get in touch with the center and coordinate there say, and see that you know everything is clear to fly at a higher altitude. So the, I mean, this is one of the ways that you know pilots normally, even if there is delay while for takeoff, they try to cover it up in air by taking a higher altitude and flying very high because the higher you fly, you are able to fly faster. Well, then is devising schedules. It's just for your information. Next is devising schedules without a contingency plan may look promising on paper, but practically when inevitable or even the unforeseen hits, uh, then you'll always have to have a backup plan that needs to be implemented. Then is allocation of resources. Now, after the operation, uh, the ensuing phase of the operations takes control and assigns relevant resources to the corresponding schedule. So after the operation, after you set up those things, then you think of allocating the resources. Next is the gate scheduling team takes charge of allotting individual gates to flights. Further, it is again a twofold process of executive scheduling, which begins with maintenance of operation schedules and rescheduling. Next is plan execution. Now, after the third phase mentioned about that the mentioned about that we spoke about the twofold process of executive scheduling as we spoke about it begins which involves maintenance of operation schedule and rescheduling the next stage is of course the actual departure and arrival times should be reflected in the operational schedules then they plan the execution they take into consideration schedule deviations in case there is any deviations if any and in case of deviations the process of rescheduling is initiated that is any deviation from the normal schedule, which is prepared. That's it. Thank you. Yeah, welcome. Yeah, thank you. So for, as you know, uh, as this for personal uh, also, uh, as you know, sometimes we face challenges regarding the overview of the chapters and also the book of this airline strategic uh, and airport management. So uh, in the future, can you give us for permission in order to reach with you? Sure. When we face any challenge or any- Yes, yes, please go ahead. Can regarding, you. Yeah, yeah. You can WhatsApp, so because, yeah. All right, yeah. yeah. But I want you to know that there are notes, go by the notes. Yes, yes. Notice BBT, everything that you have been uploaded to the Google Classroom. Why not? So yeah. we review it, maybe one, two, three questions. Yeah. Uh, in the other hand, uh, I am also the 
uh, about uh, aviation family. Yeah? So sometimes maybe I have been facing a slight challenge. So you are my senior. Oh, also, yeah. you know, uh, a lot of experience in aviation industry. So we will reach as a friendly uh, sure. in the future. We will help you. I can help you. And also you will help me. So yeah. thank you. So, so, so I appreciate a lot of for your uh, for your concrete examples and clarification of everything. So I don't have any other question but maybe my colleague has any questions. So thank you very much for us. Yeah, welcome. Just pass on the information even to the other students who are there, the other students who are absent today, and uh, just tell them the syllabus is done and in case you're able to get in touch with them. And that's okay. it. But, well, uh, the Google Classroom is always updated on time and uh, as usual. So everything is always mentioned there and it's on time. Everything is done on time. I hope the students have only, you know, um, gone through the classroom notes and whatever has been posted, recordings, because from our end, everything is actually done. Yeah. yeah. Good. Right. Okay. So all the best for your exams. I've given you the question paper pattern. It's simple. I've discuss some of the important questions go by that and all the best okay all the best see you thank you bye bye amen <laughs> god willing yes yes god willing. yeah okay bye bye and god bless you all bye bye <laughs>